the big question. That's the question on everyone's minds. Um, I think I may have forgot to click record on this, so I'll just click record again, because... Okay, the audio is now live. It looks like we have... How are you getting on? Go the strike. How are you getting on? Uh, where is the strike on, just so I can inform people? Where's, what are the details? I'm just a news reporter, lad. I've, I haven't left this shed in t 20 years, man. I've been stuck in this shed for 20 years. I can't go to strikes. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so listen. I'm just gonna double, triple, espresso check that everything is working. Today is a very, very special day, as everyone knows. Uh, sorry. Oh, talk amongst yourselves there, ladies and gentlemen, please. Okay. Is everything working again? I think everything's working again. I think we're okay. So there is a strike on. We're still waiting on details. We have our best news correspondent on the ground there. Uh, letting us know the details of where the strike is and all the rest of it. Okay, so listen, this is a very, very special show. Because this is... Today we will be... Is actually the action packed to the max show as always yesterday we had on some absolute mad stuff it was absolutely insane we had uh, uh what was it guitar lessons three and one two and three are now uh up in audio form on the uh on the internet there so enjoy that um what else is happening in the world uh, we had on Dr. Doctor Business and Dr. Cello were on yesterday and we read out the journal .ie, I think it is, the, the, all the funny comments we could find there on the journal .ie. So keep staying in touch with uh, you know, society and what's happening now, current affairs. Uh, there was a big scandal about printers or something in the, in the doll or something like that. So listen, uh, I'm going to do, just for a bit of fun, I'm going to do a, a recreation of what it would be like if I was on the Late Late Show and Gay Byrne was my host. Gay Byrne was someone I grew up with when I was a kid and uh, and you, you're like when you're a kid you're like oh wow wouldn't it be cool if someday I was on the Late Late Show that was, that's like the, the best you can do in Ireland is pretty much like being president of America and what else is really big in the world? I don't know. Basically the best you can do is be pre uh, on the Late Late Show and if Gay Byrne's hosting it and especially if, the, if it was the Late Late Show, as in the Late Late Toy Show, and Gay Brown was hosting it, you would be, you'd be the talk of the town. Your mother would be going around saying, the only, the only way your mom is ever going to think that you're successful in Ireland is if you're on, you're on the Late Late Show and if Gay Brown was the host. So that window is closed down. So listen, just to avoid copyright, I'm going to, I'm going to play a very short clip of the Late Late In Show and I'm just going to talk over it just to avoid the copyright. I'm playing a little bit faster than usual. And then just for, just for a little bit of a, a hoot and a holler, I'm going to pretend I'm on the Late Late Show just for a minute. Um, is this extremely offensive? I hope so. Let's find out. Uh, oh, jeez. Making some other noises. Oh, it's the Late Late Show. Oh, my jippers. Whoa. It's your man. So, oh, Gay Burn. How are you getting on? It's, uh, it's Vegan Steven. Um, I know, Gay Burn, you don't really you think you're a bit suspicious of the whole vegan thing. I don't blame you. I'm suspicious as well. Like, what are those vegans up to? I don't know. So, listen, Gay Byrne, I'm not going to waste your time. I'm absolutely delighted that you could come back from the uh, grave from, for, for one show. Um, and I'm an absolute fan of your work. Uh, you just did so much for Ireland. You're so controversial. Absolute fucking hero. So it's an absolute gent to be, uh, to be talking to you in this messed up fantasy, which I'm having right now, as, as Vegan Steven. Uh, so here's a little song I'd like to sing to the, to the Irish people since you since you took me on board on the Late Late Show. Uh, Stephen, I believe you have a song there, dude. Uh, late Late Toy Show, man. What a what an iconic piece of Ireland, man. Okay, I'm a bit nervous. I'm a bit nervous. I have a song to play for you today, today, and I'm gonna play it for you now. 
Oh, I might be very nervous. I might be very nervous. I know, I know the Vegan Steven listeners aren't used to seeing Vegan Steven nervous, but this is the Late Late Show. Get in the zone, get in the zone, get in the zone, here we go. I think it's a little flat. Note, note, line. It's really warm in here. Does anyone notice how warm it is in here? Oh my word, okay. Here we go. Late, late show, here we go. Extremely offensive, here we go. Please welcome. Uh, to the stage to play some song. He thinks he's fucking class. Let's find out if he is or if he's just talking a load of shite. Um, this is a really bad impersonation of Gay Byrne. Um, <laughs> uh, please welcome to the stage uh, for one night only. Vegan, Stephen. Ah, we love you. Ah, ah Gay Byrne, we love you. Cue ah. lights and fade. You can say you love me sometimes You can say anything at all Cause I know you would like to But couldn't find the television we told you he couldn't hack it we told you he's like he's he's out he, we don't know what his agendas are we told you it was a bad idea to bring gay burn back from the dead that's sacrilegious he can't be doing that he can't be making fun of the dead vegan Stephen. Just one man, just vegan Steve, calm down, calm down. Gay Burn, it was an absolute pleasure. Where is he? It's over here. Gay Burn, it was an absolute pleasure. 
You're one of my all-time uh, childhood heroes. I think you're an absolute fucking legend. And um, I know that was very, very, very strange. But uh, this is a parody of a podcast, so I like to bring my hero. I just want to talk to some of my heroes, you know. Uh, let's just should we just have a little Google who Gay Byrne was and what the Late Late Show was just for the crack. Um. So Gay Byrne was this. There was this. Do you know the way you have like uh, late late comedy shows like with? Uh, oh Jesus! Not Ch- I don't know who Charles Hansen is. Good night. Uh, hey, I'm Charles Hansen. To catch a predator with Charles Hansen. Hey, I'm Charles Hansen. All right, let's have a little have a look at who Irish present Gay Byrne was. What a fucking legend! All right, uh, listen. He was born in. <coughs> where's my thing here? He was a radio presenter, right? I think uh, he died. Um, I think he died like a cancer. So I don't know. I'm not gonna. I don't know why he died. Of listen, if you want actual news, go turn on an actual news source. This is just some lad in the shed talking. All right, so chill the fuck out. Uh, Ryan Tuberty shares details on Gay Burns tribute in tonight's Late Late Toy, toy Show. Oh fuck! It's tonight. Shit. Oh yeah. Tonight's the Late Late Toy Show episode. Fuck yeah. All right. That's deadly. Oh, that's a fucking nice one. So this is the the Black Friday episode of the Vegan Stephen podcast with the Irish Toy Show. Man, Irish Toy Show, what an iconic! I'd say people all around the world tune in for the Late Late Toy Show, like all around the world. I used to I used to stay up late. Uh, ah, the memories, the memories, the memories, the memories. Ah oh, man, you'd be even. Ah, oh, so good. All, right, all it is is for people who don't know what the toy show is. It's like this big, cause the number one like late night TV show talk host, right? For years was Gay Byrne. All right, he came up through the ranks as far as I know through like, not the BBC. Maybe it was the BBC. And then RTE. Who knows? Uh, I'm just gonna read a little bit about him here. Uh, Gay Byrne, Irish presenter. Gabriel Mary. Ah! Is it when his middle name's Mary? Uh, that's a classic Irish thing. Uh, Irish people love being called Mary and Peter and uh, what's another good Irish hobby? Uh, being called I don't know. All right, we are. Our main camera is down, but we're gonna keep talking because this is live, baby. Listen, Gabriel Mary Gay Byrne was an Irish presenter, um, host of. Um, radio and television. His most notable, one of the best things about like this celebrity was he used to just be, he used to just live around, like I'm not saying I was mates with him or but I was very good friends with him is all I'm going to say. Now, what I mean is like, every so often you'd hear someone being like, uh, oh fuck I just saw Gay Byrne in the fucking uh, like in the supermarket there like you just you'd see him around Ireland like you'd hear yeah everyone knew someone who'd seen him somewhere so it was like having this like celebrity who was like one of us and I was like fuck you'd just be there like a, a typical like Irish kid or whatever would be there like uh, like playing with their Lego and then like Gay Byrne would be on and your, your grandmother and grandfather would be watching the it was like a thing that united like old people and young people from all different generations because you'd have People would love Gay Byrne because he was like, I don't know, I think he was kind of con- t- controversial for the time. We're going to find out. We're going to read up all about him. It's going to be fucking shit hot, man. Uh, Vegan Steven in the trentage- trenches for the f- at the forefront of entertainment news. I haven't even read the disclaimer yet, so. Oh, this podcast is strictly over 50s, so you have to be over 50 years old if you want to listen to this. Uh, you are taking your own life into your own hands when you listen to this. This podcast is known to cause instant death. So you may as well, if you want to be a complete fucking moron, listen to the Vegan Stephen podcast. You're risking your, putting your life into your own hands here. Um, oh yeah, here we go. Gay, gay burn Irish presenter. Um, yeah, because you had um, you had people like you know your old folks who listen to. Uh, uh, this is just from me being a kid. Like you'd have your grand, your grandma, your your granddad and grandma were listening to like this this presenter, right? And then. And every so often you'd say something controversial and then like your parents would be talking about him. Uh, this gay burn lad. Uh, like it's probably the number one TV show in Ireland. Like for a lot of years there's only like one channel in the fucking country. 
it's like RTE, um, one station, maybe two. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's like this kind of state-run, you know, like TV show or whatever called uh, The Late Late Show. And once a year at Christmas, they had this show called The Late Late Toy Show, which is where instead of just, you know, talking to politicians about like... Uh, trans rights or whatever you're into um, for one night they just looked at toys do you know they just looked at toys and just said listen we're just going to have a lot of kids on and they're going to have a look at some toys and talk about what they want for Christmas how good is that the kids just go on they just go yeah I was playing with this toy it wasn't very good I didn't like it it broke and then uh, they just like like little fights would start breaking out between like you know the little the little characters um, on the on the toy shelves, absolutely magical, and you'd be there writing your list for Santa, and you'd be waiting, you'd be waiting, um, shit, you'd be waiting there, you know, like to what you'd be there ready to write your list for Santa, what you want for Christmas, but you'd be waiting for the the episode late late toy show to come out, just so you'd know, you get the reviews from the peop the kids, knowing what toys were good and what toys weren't good, and uh, on the back end, then you know it was all like. It was all a giant ad for the toy com the toy companies in Ireland. They donate, uh, you know, the toys for the show, and then they they go to charity afterwards and so on. So it worked in conjunction in conjunction with uh, business. Um, so it gave something added massive value uh, added mass amount of value to uh, young people's lives, uh, old people's lives. Um, and then this one event they had every year, the toy show, brought the young people and the old people together as in like they loved the same show. It's like having a film that you watch every Christmas time, like, uh, uh, it's, what's it, it's always hot, it's too hot, some like it hot, uh, classic film, Marilyn Monroe, it's on every Christmas, uh, Jurassic Park on every Christmas, uh, who wants to hear about my favourite meme? I've only, here's my favourite meme I've ever seen in my life, okay? It's, uh, here's the text, okay? It says, uh, oh, fuck that. I was watching a, a show last night with, um, I was getting really scared last night, you know, because this is 100% improvised. Um, it's 100% improvised, and sometimes I don't even remember some of the songs I'm meant to be playing. Because I haven't played some of the songs in a year or two and then I'm like, oh fuck it, I'll just try and remember what it was like live on the fucking episode or whatever. So it's a bit scary. But I think that's that's what I'm trying to capture, that vulnerability, that someone struggling to improve their lives and inspiring you guys to follow your own dreams. Um, because I'm just a lad in a shed. Like, you guys can literally do exactly what I'm doing. All you have to do is stand in front of a white wall. Everyone has a white wall in their house. Everyone has a, a phone with internet connection. And they just have to go on the internet and be consistent, talk about the same thing every day. Now listen, I'm getting sidetracked here by talking about things um, that are in the business course, okay? So we had another hour, hour and 15 minutes lecture on leveraging yesterday by uh, the gorgeous Dr. Boogie. Um, and while, this is, this is insane, okay? While he was sitting here doing the episode with us, right? Wait, I've got to make sure is this, sorry. Where's the camera? Oh, you're yeah, still going, we're still going, we're still going. Okay, this is insane. While he, he was here for an hour and 15 minutes, right? He had to feck off and fl uh, to go to the airport. So I can't remember where he was going. To. But anyway, he said something like Barbados, but I'm not sure if that's where he actually was going or if he was going via, you know, London or what the crack was. But uh, he was sitting here and he was making money. He was on his laptop, just telling you guys how to leverage money, which is kind of like... It's a bit complicated, so <laughs> it's 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 part of the Make Money Now course. I got I think maybe six hours up there already of how to make uh, how to just make get yourself some extra pocket money right now. It's saying you know you don't need to go to college, uh, just you can just bring in some extra little additional income so you can have some money coming in while you're sleeping, even if it's only like ten cent. Imagine making ten cent every hour of the day, whether you're. Uh, masturbating, you're still earning 10 cent for that hour, whether you're taking a poo on the toilet, or earning, someone's paying you to take that poo, man. Um, that's called a passive income, when you're constantly getting money coming in from an outside source, uh, from an, an investment. So uh, he was talking about how to do that, 
doing uh, leveraging. We're giving away all the, the dark secrets. I myself have studied corporate marketing for the last three to four years. Um, I'm naturally a very, very shy guy, but this is a, an act of fiction right here. I have to read out, still have to read out my disclaimer. Mm. Triple Expresso. So listen, um, Tom, I was going to plan my, my show and he was saying, it was fucking fascinating. He was, it was like we're on the same fucking frequency. He said, he's been studying the work of, um, of Billy Connolly, right? And Billy Connolly was saying, um, that, uh, he was just saying that Billy Connolly, like, is himself all the time. Like, when people show up to a Billy Connolly show, they don't show up to, to hear, you know, like, uh, a fucking, a script. They show up to see, like, him that night, and whatever happens, happens, like. He's just going to show up and talk about his day. And people, like, even if they didn't laugh, they experienced what it was like to be with that guy that day at that moment. Fuck. It's like another fucking level of genius. Do you know what I mean? Because the pressure and the confidence that it takes. Uh, hang on, a few brave, a few brave lads. I see you there in the chat. Uh, the confidence that it takes, to, you know, just go out there and just talk, just talk in front of a large group of audience. Just be like, yeah, I was just going for a walk today, and I saw, uh, I saw a seagull robbing a pack of crisps out of the shop, and I thought to myself, what a gangster! What an absolute gangster that seagull is! Is an absolute gangster. Do you know what I mean? So the confidence it takes to just go up in front of a lot of people and just talk about your day is another level of fucking confidence. And he does it consistently. Like when he goes on tour, he just goes around and just goes, Hi, how are you going? Hey, how are you? Hey. Oh, hi, oh, hi, 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 hi. I don't know what he sounds like. He's an absolute legend. I think he's still alive. I hope he's still alive. Uh, anyway, he's, he's talking about Tommy Tiernan and he was saying, no, sorry, Tommy Tiernan was talking about Billy Connolly. He was saying how Tommy Tiernan was thinking, I know I mixed up the name, sorry, there's only two characters in this story Tommy Tiernan and Billy Connolly. Alright, just to confirm, in case anyone's getting confused, they're both comedians, one's Irish, one's Scottish. And they both love uh, talking. Right, so they're both are. Doing the style of comedy I'm doing right now, which is where you just kind of, you just kind of chat, and it's a general vibe, as opposed to having a scripted joke, and saying like these are my ten minutes, this is my joke, and going around, uh, to, you know, like talk about it or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Whereas it takes another level of, uh, com comedy to know. To have a Rolodex of jokes and just be able to throw them out at any situation, just <laughs> it's another kind of level of confidence, and um, it's definitely what I'm striving towards as a comedian is to um, is to do that. Now, first and foremost, I am a public figure and a businessman who moves like a politician and. Masquerading as a musician. I'm gonna use the musician stuff to uh, to get in lots of political meetings. They'll be like, oh, Vegan Steven, you're good. Can you play our, our bar mitzvah? And I'll be like, yeah, no bother. I love bar mitzvahs. <laughs> Meanwhile, chatting to all the lads. Oh, jeez, were you behind 9-11? Oh, Jesus, how much you get for that? Jeez, fair play. And could I get, could I get some shares in, in those oranges or what's the crack that? I mean, I'm chatting over here to this lad. Oh, how are you getting on? Uh, John, vegan Stephen to, uh, how many vegan Stephen hats am I putting you down for? And he goes, give us 600. And I go, geez, well, you can only, it's only one per customer, but if you, uh, if you give me the names of addresses and work it out in the back end, you know, bit of, bit of, bit of, bit of, few bribes. How are you getting on? Vegan Stephen accepts bribes and asks for bribes. I was thinking about, speaking of bribes, I was going to go up to a load of guards. I thought it'd be cool, I don't know if it would work or not, but I thought it'd be cool as like a viral internet campaign if I just went up to every guard I saw and just went like, oh, hey, getting on, how's your day going? And just if they were like, you know, I'd just be like, listen, um, all right, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, I don't know what I'll do, but this is just an idea. All right, so I'm just going to see what happens. Here we go. So there's a guard there or whatever. Hey, getting on, there's a guard. He's over there. Oh, Jesus. A bit nervous. Okay, here we go. 
Hello, officer. How are you getting on today? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, listen, I, uh, I like what you're doing, and I have nothing but respect for you. Um, this is our, I can already tell this is not going well, but I'm going to keep talking. Uh, yeah, a lot of respect for you there. I think you're a cool lad. Um, would you have any interest in... You kind of got to offer some. You got to offer someone something first, don't you? I think I'd have to offer them a. I think I'd have to have a big box of donuts. I think. Oh yeah, I think I might not. I might need a big box of donuts. Do you know what'd be better than that? A cup of coffee. A cup of coffee, and I just be like, oh hey, you getting on? Um, it's a cold day today, isn't it? You got to. You got to be casual. You got to be casual. Gee, it's a cold day today, isn't it? Jeez, fuck. Just thought a. I like what you're doing there. Can I get you? Here's a here's a cup of coffee for both of you guards. I really, I really, uh, I really, 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 you know, I like what you're doing there. Uh, so I've already given them a gift. I've given them the cup of coffee. Say, so listen, lads, here you are. Here's a cup of coffee. Which one do you want? I'll drink one as well. So they know it's not poison. <laughs> I'll just be like, listen, uh, would uh, I was hoping to get a pick. Oh no, I'm kind of gonna be direct. I'll say, listen, I'll, I'll pretend other guards have already said it's grand. So I'll go, oh, listen, lads, I'm, uh, I'm vegan, Steven. I have some coffees here for you. It's a cold day. This will get you warmed up. I'm a big fan of the, big fan of the guards and what you're doing, you know, keeping Ireland safe. I'm just I'm here to, to help improve the, the morale and Irish image confidence. Give them confidence. More, com more confidence uh, to the peeps. I've already talking way too much. So listen. Uh, I'm doing a selfie campaign to help improve the the positivity of uh, of the of the guards in Ireland. Not that they need any help. <laughs> so I've already given them the coffee. They're like, go on. I like this coffee. This lad seems like he's a smiley lad. So listen, lads. I'm not going to beat around the bush. Would you mind holding the camera while I take a selfie with your with your friend? Would that be okay? Would that? Be, I know you guys are busy. I would preferably do it to a lad who's really bored, like guarding the post office. And two of them, I'd be like, "Listen, is there any is there any hope for a selfie there? Here's a, here's a cup of coffee for yourself. It's a cold day. Look what you're doing." When I, all right, so I'm there. There, two guards. I'm like, "Oh, lock me up, lock me up, lock me up." So I just get a picture of me with loads of guards, and that's it. That'd probably be the album cover. Just me taking loads of selfies with guards, and I'd be I'd be joking around with them, saying, "Uh." Jeez, what's it? What's it like getting a, a blowjob off your superior officer? And they'd be like, Jesus! I thought did people didn't know there was guards love riding guards, and do you know what? Uh, I've had a lot of ex girlfriends who were guards, and I'm into it. I'm into the whole handcuff thing. I'm into that. I'm into guard. Lock me up there, and we'll and I'll ride you. I'll ride you. Um, yeah, good crack. So, guards, fair play to you, no more respect to you. Hopefully, have a, a, a cool viral ad campaign with me and the guards. So, listen, we're talking about not only how cute does Gay Burn look, uh, I'm getting a bit concerned. <laughs> Okay, okay. Just technical issues here. So listen, we're not gonna. <laughs> oh, all right, Ryan. I'm just trying to see how long this the show is going on for. Ah, oh, great, great, great. We're still in the first half. So, uh, late night toy show. Some lad called Gaber. So listen, the reason why I'm talking about all these things is because uh, was it Tom, Tommy, Tommy. Tommy Tiernan said that uh, he was trying to do, basically what I'm trying to get down to is I was concerned I need to come in here and write a script and read off the script and all the rest of it in order for this comedy to be good and for people to be entertained and, and all the rest of it, you know. This is the Morning Espresso, this is your coffee in the morning, this is Vegan Steven, King of Consistency, number one vegan podcast and Tommy Tiernan said that he likes to do it improvised. He likes to do his comedy improvised and just talk about whatever. He, he has some jokes which he goes back to, you know, some staples, but generally just, 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 yeah. It requires a whole other level of confidence. But it's just nice to have 
someone else who's thinking the same way, who's also brilliant. Do you know what I mean? I oh, know it's kind of it's kind of nice if you think, oh, I only want to wear a green for the rest of my life, and then you find someone else who only wore a green for their lives, and they also happen to be successful or something like that. So uh, that's comedy, anyway. Gay burn. Her data e four hours ago. Ryan Turbidy shares details. Yeah, my. So here he is, anyway. Gabriel Mary. Did you hear that big bottle bank? Gabriel Mary Gay Byrne was an Irish presenter and host of radio and television. His most noticeable role was first host of Late Late Toy Show. Over a 37 year period spinning, spanning 1962 until 19999. Uh, so he's a 60s, he's a 60s baby. The Late Late Toy Show is, uh, is the world's greatest. Oh shit! The Late, the Late Late Show is the world's second longest running chat show. Oh, excuse me. Affectionately known as Uncle Gay, Gaybo, or Uncle Gaybo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's mad, like you see him, you see him around the place, you just see him around Ireland, like just bopping around, you just see him in a restaurant or just getting like at a petrol station, you just see the back of his head in a deli or something. He's just, he's just around like, um, absolute top lad. So I've gone through, you know, what the, he's from Rialto, Dublin, R-I-L-T-A, T-I-O, Dublin, uh, died 2019, November, so recently enough. Alright, the time is 11.19. The date is 29th of the 11th, 2019. Uh, his spouse was Caitlin Watkins. Uh, movies, Conspiracy of Silence. He had two children, Crona Byrne and Susie Byrne. Um, if either of you uh, would like to go on a date with Vegan Stephen, hook uh, something up. That, now, not this... I got high standards, so Susie Byrne and Corona, Corona Byrne. One of you guys might be a male, so I'm not sure how that's going to work. We'll get a motel room. Okay, Meaning of Life. Oh, that was such a good show. Um, Meaning of Life was a really good show that Gay Byrne did. It was so good. I'd highly recommend it. Um... Oh, there's so many iconic episodes um, to do with that. Got a lot of pictures of of Gay Byrne there. Uh, so Ryan Tuberty's the guy who took... Oh, jeepers. Ryan Tuberty blames Gay Byrne for this one aspect of the toy show. All right, that's... Miss... Yeah, not misleading, but anyway. Uh... Veteran B B RTE broadcaster Gay Byrne dies aged 85. The death has been announced. Yeah, so 85, yeah. Crowd, crowd, tur crowd turns out to bid farewell to the veteran RTE. Yeah, so the Lele Toy Show is on tonight, man. So it's an absolutely iconic show. Like, I, I cannot, like, every. They used to bring in celebrities. Uh, man, they, they brought in, you know, ter not Terminator. Before they had Angelina Jolie to be uh, Lara Croft, and they had some other woman in, and they had her on the Light Light Toy Show, and they're like, "This gonna one's gonna play Lara Croft in the in the Toy Show." Now, were her mammarins organs as gorgeous? I don't know. It's hard to say. They're they both wear a lot of clothes, but um. <laughs> Yeah, I also didn't know who Laura Croft was, and I was like, "Geez, I might check this Laura. I might check this Laura Croft out. She's looking well." So I was about must have been about twelve at the time, and I was like, "Geez, I don't know what this feeling in my pants is, but I, I like. I think I really think this woman has some good stuff to say about politics. So I'm gonna follow follow this Laura Croft woman on Twitter because uh, I just want to hear what she has to say. I am not." Uh, Merely looking on Twitter to see the size of her things. I respect this fictional character as yada 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 yada. I think you get the point. I was young. 
I was young, I was wrong. Uh, Tuberty plays it cool with goofy Frozen theme toy show. Okay, whatevs. So yeah, the late, late late toy show they had on like all kind of celebrities. Like they had on Pierce Brosnan, who was James Bond at the time. They had like famous, you know, like rugby players and. Uh, I'll choose. I'll look up most controversial moments. Because uh, he's really like a fucking badass icon. Do you know what I mean? Jesus Christ. Sex condoms boy zone. 20 memorable moments. But yeah, what I was trying to say is, you know, with the podcast, I was getting very... Why I'm talking about uh, these comedians because I got really concerned about the podcast. I was like, fuck, should I be, you know, scripting all this? And so on. But I think it's much better just to go with the, the flow because it's much more uh, interactive with... Uh, the current culture if I do it off the cuff and use it off pure inspiration because I don't know where like what's going to happen that's why it's so interesting uh, seeing someone you know struggling and can go wrong any second like the cameras keep shutting down and so on okay here we go this is the journal.ie best gay burn moments okay November 2019 here we go sex condoms and boys own 20 memorable moments from gay burns career Allegedly. Accused. Alright, here we go. Uh, I was going to see if there's any... Oh, that was so good. Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry, uh, there's a big lawsuit. Gay Byrne was having a chat with him, right? Uh... Alright, oh, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Here we go, here we go. You uh, two return in... I don't know. How do you pronounce one nine 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 nine? Nineteen ninety nine. Okay, okay. Uh, so he introduced you two in nineteen eighty. So that's iconic. Jerry Adams interview. I think is this backwards? Sorry, I'm having trouble understanding the format of this article. Uh, so he said. He said, "Listen." Okay, I'm re I was reading it backwards. Introducing U2 in 1980. So he said, listen, here's U2. So fair play to him. Uh, that doesn't look like Jerry Adams. So he interviewed Jerry Adams anyway in 1994. That's pretty cool. Man, this is one of the most interesting things I've ever read in my life. Fuck me. Um, Jerry Adams interview. Sinn Féin. Uh... Old shark, in Ireland. Yeah, old shark. Old shark. Can anyone do a Northern Irish accent? It's fucking hard. Hey, we doing, eh? Hey. Cars. Uh, Jerry Adams, 1994. So, Sinn Fein leader Jerry Adams was interviewed. Um, Re reconciliation for about peace and reconciliation. So there's a little bit of there's a little bit of banter there between Northern and Northern Ireland and, and Ireland in case you didn't know. There's a bit of they were having an old wrestling boxing match for a little while. So they brought this lad Jerry Adams was helping was brought in. He was a controversial man but he he he's kind of an ambassador for a group of people or whatever. So Mm. Jerry Adams helps keep the peace. Controversial statement, I know, but uh, he's done a, he's done a lot for done a lot for Ireland in some ways. Alright, let's pop this down there. Here we go. Jerry Adams. He's a politician anyway. Late late toy show annual. Okay. There's a picture of Pat Short. Okay, moving on. Interview with sex therapist. Oh my Jesus. Uh, 1989. That was the year I was born. Man, maybe my parents saw this episode and that's how I was conceived. Um, I don't know. Uh, Swedish sex therapist in 1989. This is so controversial. Named Johnny uh, from Mayo. What? Phoned in to ask the therapist how often she has... T has herself a day. How often she has it herself a day. <laughs> that is 
it's hilarious. I really want to watch this, but I can't because it, it'll get like copyright and all that shit or whatever. I'm trying to keep this open source. So you can use, uh, you can play my, if you like my me, me singing a song, you can use that in your YouTube video to help advertise, build your company or whatever. Uh, Vegan Steven is giving you free music to help promote your own company. Free quality love. Um, Vegan Steven, a man of the people. Selling confidence. Run for president. Also running for, of Ireland and also run for Pope 2020. That is so good. Some lad called Johnny from Mayo rang in and asked the therapist how often she had sex live on television. Because <laughs> if, if anyone doesn't know, I know this might make sense to a lot of people, but condoms were illegal in Ireland. Like, you could get arrested if you sold condoms, if you had condoms, because uh, contraception was illegal because... Uh, Jesus, it's kind of complicated. It was a 1916 rising. All the rest of that, right? Some lad, and then Mike Collins and all the lads uh, got, were like, listen English, away you go, right? English, in, it's kind of very complicated, just do it independence and stuff. Okay, listen, England, Ireland had their house, right? They were like, listen, we're having a good time. This is Ireland's house, Grant. Then England decided to come over and be like, listen, uh, we want to stay in your house. And Ireland was like, ah... All right, fine, come on in for a minute. And then after a while, Ireland was like, do you mind going back to your own house? Like, you have your own gaff. This is our gaff. Like, you, we're mates and all. Come over whenever you want, but mate, just give us a bit of space there. So, uh, where is this even going? Am I trying, I'm trying to, so, yeah, okay, so, okay. All right, so England were in Ireland's gaff for a while. And, uh, Um, I hope you're enjoying these long pauses. I'm building suspense. What's going to happen next? So, uh, what's that lad called? Eamon de Valera. Right, Eamon de Valera. So, Irish got independence whenever from England. Eamon de Valera was like, listen, we're going to set up a new set of rules, Irish constitution, that how we're going to, you know, you know, just the rules and how you run the country. It's called like the legislation or constitution or whatever you're into, right? Uh, so he wrote that book and he was like, listen, I can't just write it myself because I'm just one lad, Eamon de Valera. Apparently he's autistic and all that, which is good. Um, just goes to show uh, what you have wrong with you, you can, you can do success. Uh, Eamon de Valera, Mike Collins is already dead or something like that. Um, so uh, they got in some lad, they got in the, like, the bishop or something of Ireland. I don't know, some religious lad. And they started writing in all these laws that relate to religion. So what I'm saying is, when they were writing up the laws for Ireland, they brought in some religious dude. So that's why there's a lot of really weird religious laws in Ireland. All right. So Eamon de Valera was there writing the book on how to run the country. And for some reason, he decided to bring a priest in because he didn't really know what he was doing. And he just wanted a hand. And the priest was like, listen, you can't be having condoms. We need to have more children than we can handle so we can have more Christians. Uh, I don't care if they're starving to death, we just want more, 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 more. All right. I don't know, this is what I heard in a pub, so who knows. Okay, just gotta do a quick check to make sure everything is working. 100 million percent. And then we shall continue with the number one vegan podcast. Uh, Is anybody else confused? Um, mm, okay. Pardon me. Just gotta make sure everything's working here. We may or may not be having a technical difficulty. Um, so, um, I don't even know how to fix this. This, <laughs> why am I doing this live? <laughs> okay, uh, no, I do not. Um, come on, my love. 
Alright, we're nearly there. So we're talking about uh, why you're not allowed, why condoms are illegal in Ireland. Um, and it's to do with the old constitution job. Oh my flipping jeepers, like what is going on with this lad? Maximize. Okay, we're in. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I think we're back. Um, okay, so you're still with me? Now listen, do your own research. What the fuck do I know about all your history? I'm just some lad. Um... shift isn't it it's like oh jeez we've all been there Eamon de Valera likes to do lines of ecstasy and nights out that's what I heard just snorts it up his nose we're all like Eamon don't be at it he's like I'm Eamon I'm Eamon I'll do what I want I, I, was, I was behind the 1916 rise and I was the mastermind I'd say you were Eamon I'd say you were keep talking it's a bit of a pub talker sometimes uh, so listen this is the part of the show where Wait, okay, so we've talked about Eamon Neverlair, we've talked about why you weren't allowed to use condoms in Ireland. So, okay, I was just going some history there to describe, you know, why it was so controversial when a sex therapist was in Ireland. It was because uh, there was a lot of religious rules written into the law, okay? Oh, God. Gay Byrne meets Fault of Terrors. Oh, class. I love that show, Fault of Terrors. You definitely check it out. Uh, Gay Byrne meets Faulty Towers. I'm sorry, I don't like to do this in front of so many people. I hope nobody else is watching. <laughs> it's a quote. <laughs> um, and then we have just a general episode. Uh, oh, shit. Someone revealed an affair with Charles Hockey. So, Richard's Latin Power was having sex with a, a woman who wasn't his wife. It's pretty much what every single episode of the Vegan Steven podcast is about. Uh, men uh, in power, abusing it. Um, or just generally people in power. As I said, like, my, my wife hasn't even been born yet. I'll be getting married to some 30 year old when I'm 80. So. That's how these feckin' evil lads think. Alright, here we go. Oh jeez, yeah, Charles Hy. Charles Hy is like this big, infamous, famous tea shock of Ireland called Charles Hy, and he was off having marriage. No, he's he's off having marriage without consent. He's off having a fucking extra curricular activities with a woman that is not my wife. He was having an old Bill uh, Bill Clinton, but instead of just getting a blowy. Under the table, he was having the full sex on the regular. All right. So, gay burn. Oh yeah. All right. We'll keep going with this. This is this is fucking top notch crack. I must say, gay burn the late late sh- gay late late shot. Here we go. Uh, Biggie Realm Six. I don't know what that is. Six Irish men jailed following false convictions uh, in 1974. Pub bombing. Okay. That sounds like shy crack. So he was talking about that anyway in 1991. Um, and that was one of the best, kind of, most controversial episode. Uh, Om- Omaha bombing tribute, 1998. That's O M A H A. So uh, 29 people were killed in Omaha bombings. Uh, the tribute night was held for six months. Jeez, fair play. So, uh, yeah, he did that. And that was controversial. Um, Pat McGrath tribute show, 1997. All right, so this is going through Gay Burn here. Um, and some of his most iconic shows. This is uh, the old journal. The old journal that I... 
and we've only got 10 minutes left so we're running out of time. Listen, this is the time of the show where you guys just, uh, you know, listen, go like, listen, uh, I hate my kids. I'm really scared I won't be able to pay my mortgage in time. You just, you just, you know, you have that private self talk and you just, Vegan Steven is listening here. Um, this is per, this is uh, completely uh, private and all the rest of it. So whatever you say to yourself now is private. All right, so just uh, have some time for yourself. Put the old cup of kettle, put, put the put the kettle on there now, and uh, buy yourself a little chocolate bar and be, be nice to yourself. So this is your moment. Pop, 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 I'll start you off, right? And then you just keep going, you get you get random. Uh no one listens to me. Um I just feel like I'm not where I am uh in life right now. Uh why am I uh, sad in the mornings? Right, keep going. say in my pop song Sunday morning uh, mental health is expensive so you can watch that on uh, if you go to the top video on my uh, YouTube account subscribe to that YouTube account now you the first video there is called uh, Irish mental health system I have a video talking about the Irish mental health system it's only a minute and a half that's just me doing all the rap about CBT and other mental health things all right here we go uh, Mike Murphy prank um, Alright, sorry, I just got to read through the disclaimer first, real quick. We are live everywhere. Okay, here we go. Vegan Stephen Podcast is a parody of a podcast. Vegan Stephen is a fictional character. All guests are allegedly fictional characters. All characters are in the show are fictional. Even those based on real people are entirely fictional. All celebrity voices are poorly in this program. Contains coarse language and due to its content should not be viewed by anyone. This is the Vegan Stephen Podcast, the number one vegan podcast promoting positive mental health. It's not just for vegans, it's every day. I'm your host, Vegan Stephen. At the time of recording, we are la 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 la. We are live on Instagram, YouTube, all the places. All right, this is serious. Today's date, once again, is the 29th of the 11th, 2019. The time is 11.40. Vegan Stephen is doing a house party tour. Vegan Stephen uh, hats for sale at... They're normally €200 Euro for a Vegan Stephen hat. That is, you get your hat and it will be signed by Vegan Stephen with a certificate of authenticity. So if you want an official Vegan Stephen hat with a certificate of authenticity signed, I will actually have the hat put on my head and I will sign it. So it will smell like me. If you want to know what I smell like. Do I smell like eggs? Do I smell like paint? Do I smell like glass? Who knows? You'll find out. You can smell the hat and smell what I smell like. Um, so I'll wear the hat. I'll sign it, I'll send it to you. The price is 200 euro. Okay? 200 euro. Very limited supply. Time is running out, ladies and gentlemen. Time is running out. That clock is ticking. So, uh, you can DM now to reserve your hat. Now, just for you guys, just for the next 30 days, for the Vegan Stephen podcast listeners, this is only because I care about you guys. All right? I want to be doing this for everyone. This is only for exclusive Vegan Stephen podcast listeners. The Vegan Stephen hat. What is the hat made out of? Doesn't fucking matter. It's what it represents. It represents confidence. It represents the Vegan Stephen seal of approval. Okay? It doesn't matter what the hat's made of, what it says in the hat. It's coming from me. I have worn it and I will sign it. And it's uh, something that I hope will empower you 
to help follow your dreams and give you the confidence to um, um, push through all the all the naysaying and so on. So a vegan Stephen hat, you can buy it right now for 200 euro. Now, for a limited time only, for the next 30 days only, it will be for sale for 100 euro. Only for the next 30 days, okay? Normally 200 euro, but for the next 30 days it will be 100 euro. Uh, you can DM now to reserve. As I said, there is a very, 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 very limited supply. We're talking very, very limited, okay? Um, so this limited time only, limited price, 30 days. Um, I'm afraid to even say this now because the, we're, we're pretty much running out. All right, they're sounding like hotcakes. Everyone wants them. Uh, all right, here we go. Oh! Moving back to our main man, it's your boy. Sex and condoms, man. Gayburn. He loves talking about condoms. He loves talking about sex. He loves talking about... He loves being respectful of bombs. Bomb victims, excuse me. Uh, let's see. Mike Murphy prank. He might have been... Sorry. He tricked some lad called Mike Murphy anyway on a candid camera sketch show. And there's a picture of Sinead O'Connor there having the crack with him there. Uh, Trinity College Dublin uh, uh, Do you understand the expression fuck off do you? <laughs> Burn was described by the commotion in the background Alright, so I don't really understand what happened there Oh I'm reading the wrong article with the wrong thing, sorry 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 Okay, so anyway Gay Byrne was there, do you know, fuck off to you, he was doing an article and then someone said, do you know, fuck off to you, okay. Moving on to the next one, Shania Connor. Um, she, in 1988, she performed a song called Chatting with Byrne. Huh? Oh, before Chatting with Byrne, okay, excuse me. Uh, he said people watching would say her shaved head is a disgrace. Jeepers before an audience member said that people weren't saying this. Damn! <laughs> Caught rapid! Caught rapid! Uh, he was pulled, he was, Gay Byrne was a chancer. He was playing with the, playing with the old truth, he got caught out. Uh, O'Connor later appre appreci appeared alongside Byrne on a Late Late Show, 50th anniversary show in 2012, and the pair held hands. Ooh, was there a romance going on between Gabriel, Gabriel, Gay, Bur Gay Mary Byrne or with Shane O'Connor? Were they kissing? Was Gay Byrne holding Shane O'Connor's head? Uh, I don't know, I'm just asking questions here. This is entertainment news. This is a work of fiction. Here we go. Uh, Jesus. Here we go. International Women's Day, we'll skip that. It's 2019, no, 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 we don't care about women, we're moving on. Next, Dermot Morgan, I'm only messing, okay, here we go. Uh, lay, lay, women, how are you getting on? Uh, condom train incident, jeez, this sounds brilliant. Journalist Niall Caffrey. Um, also discussed the condom train incident of 1971. This sounds fantastic. The headline once again is International Women's Day 1991. Um, where members of Irish Women's Liberation Movement travelled to Belfast to buy contraception when it was still illegal in the Republic. So, um, Belfast was kind of been, had a bit of British crap. Listen, uh, goodbye Instagram, you are amazing. I know it's the end of the Instagram feed right now. Uh, this is every day, and this has been the Late Late Toy Show episode. Vegan Steven, the Late Late Toy Show uh, with Gay Byrne. Okay, here we go. Uh, broadcaster Martin. Yeah, that's great. So what they did was they went up to, they bought condoms illegally and they brought them down and sold them, or else gave them away. I'm not sure what the details are, but they were really uh, an inspirational uh, for women all over Ireland because they realised, you know, we don't have to get pregnant just because it's how the law works. We can we can do our own things. Cause rich people cheat, yeah. 
Have an abortion. If you're rich, cheat that baby out of life. Um, or whatever you're into. Uh, you. You decide. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man. Definitely. Abortion's one hot cookie. Definitely. I'm not talking about it. I have no opinions on the subject, nor shall I ever. But it's too controversial. Even for vegan Stephen. Here we go. Um, ba -ba 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 yeah, so fair play to them. They did that on Women's Day. Uh, and they invited some prominent feminists and women on the show. Fair play. Uh, Dermot Morgan montage, 1998. Uh, Father Ted actor Dermot Morgan died. Uh, Gay Byrne introduced a compilation clip of Morgan's various appearances on the Late Late Show. Oh no, I didn't know he was on the Late Late Show. Time, so late, late. Uh, Pat Flynn, I don't know who he is, but we'll find out. Uh, former politician. Just gotta see how we're looking here. Okay, gonna move back a little bit. Uh, former politician, Podrick Flynn, who said he was, he had chambered political excuse. Charmed, C H A R M E D, political existence, E X I S T E N C E. Okay, appeared on the show 20 years ago and discussed accountability. Okay, uh, 100,000 pounds a year with expenses and also owned a home in each Dublin. In e Home each in Dublin, Castle Bar, Brussels. Uh, so, some politician and a few Bob, maybe. The tribunal found that Flynn had wrongly and corruptively sought 50,000 payment from a developer, Tom Gilbarn, in 1989. Right, well, listen, uh, I'm going to tell you now if there's money out there, I'm going to fucking take it. So, I'm going to take every bribe coming my way, just being honest. Here we go. Uh, Stephen Fry. Interview, 2015. That was so good. That was one of my favourite bits of, like, television of all time. Um, so, Stephen Fry and Gay Byrne, two absolute heavyweights uh, in thinking, met up for a chat. And uh, outside the Late Late Toy Show, Stephen Fry went viral in 2015 when a pair discussed God, when the pair discussed God and the meaning of life. This interview in included Byrne's RTE show, The Meaning of Life with Gay Byrne. Uh, so here's a quote. Suppose it's all true and you walk up the pearly gates and you are confronted by God. What will Stephen Fry say to him or her? Byrne asked. And then we have the reply. This is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, um, I think I'll say bone cancer question mark what's that about how dare you how dare you create a world in which there is such misery that is not our fault Fry replied um, next quote it's not right it's utterly utterly evil why should I respect a carpicious carp Capricious, C A P or I C I O U S, capricious, not sure, uh, mean minded, stupid God who created a world in which it is full of injustice and pain. Next line. Burns stated silent, stayed silent before saying, That sure is the longest answer to that question I've ever got in the entire series. After this interview, Gardy launched a blasphemy probe into Fry after the TV viewer claimed comments made in the interview were blasphemous. In 2018 a blasphemy referendum was held to change this aspect of Irish constitution which was passed by 64.85% to 35.50%. So what I'm saying there is uh, Stephen Fry was asked a question about religion he said like religion's a lot of cock and then uh, there was a law in Irish law which said like you know you can't say anything bad about religion which is blasphemous and that's actually in the law okay so there was an actual lawsuit against him uh, and the courts decided that the there was no one there wasn't enough support there wasn't enough people outraged in order for them to 
to sue him. I think there's a fine involved if you talk against God. Or else so Stephen Fry could have gone to prison, hypothetically, uh, just for saying God's a load of shite, right? He just, he just said, not into God, not into it, you know? Uh, so he could have gone to prison. And then a referendum was held uh, in 2018 and they voted on, should we take this part of religion out of our government and they said yes. So once again, uh, religion got legally introduced in our government after the 1916 rising when, oh, what was his name? Man with the glasses. She you knows, uh, whatever it fucking was, Eamon de Valera and so on. Listen, I'm probably wrong in the reta details, so you guys correct me downstairs um, because I'm just going off the top of my head here. So you guys let me know the facts and details. Um, so this is like Wikipedia, man, so you share your knowledge. If you know better than I do, fantastic. I want to hear from you. And you know what? If you're really, really super intellectual and entertaining, we might even have you on the show via video call or if you... Uh, or so on. Okay? So, uh, Vegan Steven's all about bringing the best minds in the world together. He is not... He knows... Vegan Steven is an absolute genius, okay? But he is enough of a genius to know he's a complete idiot. Um, I'm enough. Uh, I'm smart enough to know um, that I'm ruled by all this, you know, like all my negative self beliefs and so on. Um, so I constantly have to work to to battle against fear um, to make sure that fear doesn't take over my mind and scarcity doesn't take over my mind. I'm a big fan of uh, abundance and so on. Listen, uh, there's some woman called Greta something today, and uh, there's some there's some protests going on for climate change and fair play to that. Now, first of all, uh, climate change, fair play to everyone taking action, but I will say that if someone is in power, I will be making fun of them. Now, apparently you're not allowed to make fun of Greta because she's, uh, um, she's only 16 and all that, so that's fine. Um, but I will quote one person. We had, Yesterday on the podcast, we had uh, Dr. Cello and Dr. Business in, and they were, they were just re reading comments. And just jokingly, we just made a joke, so uh, here it is. Um, prepare to be horrifically offended. Because um, I, I believe, even if they're your mates, you should just, just you know, just have an old laugh. Like, it's not need to take life so fucking seriously. Like, uh, I think you're one Greta, uh, I don't know anything about her, but she seems like she's doing a bit of good. So fair play to her. I, don't, I, don't, I said I've, I've literally only seen a picture of her and I'm nothing about her. I've no real interest in knowing anything about her. But sure, fuck it. If people are interested, and in I'll learn about it. Because what do I know? I'm just, an, I'm just, an, I'm just a lad in the shed, like you know. What do I know? Um, but the joke was, uh, I said, what do you think about this Greta, Greta Fonberg woman, or whatever her name is? And first of all, they thought it was hilarious that I mispronounced her second name because I don't know what her second name is. Um, um, and sorry, the only comment they made, which. We had we just had an emotional uh, gut laugh. We just couldn't laugh because it's an emotional re laughter is an emotional reaction. You can try and put all these fucking oh you should laugh at this, you should not laugh at this. Oh that's right. Oh that's wrong. But what actually causes an involuntary moment of laughter, which cracks you out of fucking that crippling depression uh, and makes you laugh hysterically just for fucking five seconds. That's a uh, an involuntary reaction caused by an absolute mastermind in comedy. Maybe. Uh, but anyway, so I said, lad, uh, you know, I think this Greta woman, and he, she was like, uh, he was like, uh, ah, just think she needs a boyfriend. So that's that's one lad's perspective on it. She just needs a boyfriend, um, which I think we all just need a boyfriend in this life. You know, if you think about it, don't we all just need a boyfriend in this life? I know I do. Okay. Jeez, I'm so tired. The Bishop and Knight, Knighty, 1966. Oh, Jesus. One of the most famous controversial moments in the Late Late Show. Shit, it's about to go off. Oh, man, this is mad because I'm running for Pope, so I'm going to have to sort this bishop out. All right, here we go. One of the most famous controversial moments on the late late Steve, uh, vegan Stephen is the living embodiment of the devil. I will give your kids cancer, so you're taking your life into your own hands. If you listen to the show, okay? This is strictly over fifty year olds. This is not light listening. This stuff will stretch your mind. Here we go. The Bishop and the Nightingale. Nighty. N i g h i t e. Nighty. Nineteen sixty six. Okay, that's fucking early. That's really strange because I thought, oh, Gay Byrne only came on the air in 1962, I think. 
Okay, here we go. One of the most famous controversial moments on the Late Late Show and the Bishop and Nighting Nighty incident. Okay, we're moving. We're, we're going to read a little bit more. It says uh, the controversy arose from Gay Byrne picking a married couple from the studio audience. Oh, this sounds good. Richard and Ellen Fox from Dublin. Byrne asked each partner questions while the other was out of earshot. Oh, this is gonna be good. Uh, one of the questions related to the color of Aline's nighty on their honeymoon. Oh shit. Richard replied that it was transparent. Um, while Ellen said she wasn't wearing any. Oh, Jesus. Why does anyone give a fuck about this? I don't know. Uh, okay, we're going to keep reading. <sighs> this scandalous 1966 television moment drew condemnation from the Bishop of Con Clonfert, C L O N F E R T. Thomas Ryan in County Galway. <laughs> Just some fucking owl lad bringing you up being like, you can't talk about nighties. You can't talk about pajamas on, on the on the television. People's morals are at stake here. You can't be talking about pajamas. <laughs> oh my god. There weren't any pajamas involved though, Bishop. That's even worse than wearing not wearing pajamas is even worse than wearing pajamas. What are these lads up to? Uh, this scandalous 1966 television moment drew condemnation from the Bishop of Clardiff, Thomas Ryan in County Galway. He denounced the show, oh my word, and said he was disgusted by the disgraceful performance uh, is that I don't know it seems very like I don't know how you could have planned for that but anyway I think the show might have been live I'm not sure uh, following this Byrne issued a statement saying the show had not intended to embarrass the viewers alright alright moving on uh, next one uh, memorable, no, sorry, Boys Own, 1993, okay? Here's what it has to say, it has a video there. Another memorable performance for very different reasons. At Boys Own's first appearance on the show, the band had to fight for Byrne's approval. He said they would be Ireland's answer to take that. He also said there was no talent in the group as they didn't sing or write or play instruments. That is actually very hilarious. <laughs> We're in a band. Okay, let's hear your music. We don't, we don't have any music. Okay, let's hear you sing then. We don't sing. Let's hear you dance. We can't dance. Are you sure you're in the music business? You don't have any songs you can... Oh, that's very funny. Uh, the <laughs> so they're trying to copy take that, allegedly. The band... Oh my god, is this camera constantly crying? Like, what's going on with the camera? So I'm going to keep going. I we'll have to wrap up this article shortly. So uh, the, group's performance, the group performed and danced while wearing an elastic mix of braces, no shirts... And dungarees. Oh my god. Not dungarees. Anything but the dungarees. People's morals are at stake. The Pope will be on the phone, man. The Pope will be on the phone. This is 1993. Boys Own were fucking huge, man. All my sister listened to growing up. My, the only music on in my, that I grew up with was Boys Own and Cat Stevens. Because my sister listened to Boys Own morning, night, noon, and day. Boys Own was being played in the house all day, every day. And. Every day, any time I was in the car with my dad, he only had one tape in the in the car, and that was Best of Cat Stevens. So, <laughs> the only music I grew up with, once again, is uh, Boys Own and the Best of Cat Stevens. Not even General Cat Stevens, just the Best of. Nothing else. Best of Cat Stevens, I think there was maybe... I think Boys Own had two albums, so it was just literally those two albums. That was the sound of my childhood. Uh, a boy band and one kind of folky singer. 
Cat Stevens is now like one of the heads of an Islamic extremist group. And I think what happened to all the boys on lads? Stephen Gately died. Uh, one of them's like a famous actor. Uh, the other three, I think one's a mechanic or something. And uh, what's wrong? With them? I don't know. Um, but they're all doing well. Like they're all well. One of them's dead, so he's not doing so well for himself. Um, but they're all like you know like you'd recognise them anywhere, and I'm sure they're not short of a few bob. Like they're like. If I ever got to hang out with any of them, I'd be absolutely starstruck. Like so, they're they're Irish royalty. Like, um, they're they're great. Uh, the group performed dance while wearing yada yada yada. When performance burn, okay. Your great movers. This is Gay Burn. Your great movers will look forward to hearing from you when you're famous, and that we did. Okay, well, they already were famous. They're on the Late Late Toy Show. Like. <laughs> they were like, oh, they're on the Late Late Show. Okay, here we go. Anne Murphy. Never trust someone called Murphy. Murphy's Law is called Murphy's Law for a reason. Uh, one of Byrne's most famous interviews on the show. And not entirely for purely positive reasons. Oh, my God. Annie Murphy. That's actually so amazing. 1993. My, my nana's... My 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 dad's mother burst like I probably shouldn't say this because of in case someone finds out my ancestry tree or something but well, fuck it. Uh, my uh, my grand my 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 nana's name is Annie and her second name's Murphy so Annie Murphy it's the same name as my grandmother. What does all this mean? Is this a sign? Is this a sign from Allah? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's see what the gods have given us today. Let's find out. Oh, praise. Here we go. Uh, Annie Murphy, 1993. One of Byron's most famous interviews on the show. And not entirely for positive purpose reasons. Uh, 1993. Okay, here we go. Murphy had an affair. Jesus Fucking hell. That is... No way! Oh, shit. Uh, Murphy had an affair with former Bishop of Galway, Eamon Casey. Oh, my God. Is that the guy who rang up and said you can't be talking about underwear? Or is that a different different guy? Uh, um, that's fucking mental. One minute the bishop's like, here, you can't be doing... Meanwhile, his mate's off riding this woman on TV. Uh, Murphy ha had an affair with former bishop of Galway, Eamon Casey. That is top-notch law. Um, so, fucking... Gay Byrne got the last laugh there. He's like, Bishop, you wanna you wanna make fun of my podcast? Let, late, late, Gay Byrne was the original number one podcaster. Uh, Vegan Steven is now the number one podcaster, but back in the day, Gay Byrne was the king of podcasts and he did what he wants. He had in people riding bishops. He said, you can only come on the Late Late Show if you've had sex with a bishop. That's... <laughs> How good is that? If you haven't had sex with a bishop, we don't wanna hear from you. Okay, here we go. Murphy had an affair with former Bishop of Galway, Eamon Casey. Um, my principal used to be called Mr. Casey, so was my... Is this the same guy? I don't know. Um, Casey said he was the father of her son, Peter. Oh, shit! Not only did they have sex, he, she, she had like a living being, a living entity to prove. That's insane. That is insane. Fuck me. So the bishop had sex with this girl, uh, Annie Murphy. And, uh, Jesus. Peter was born in 1973. Uh, so he's probably four then or something. When Casey was the bishop of Kerry. Jeez, so he moved, this bishop moves around. Uh... All right, juggling the bishops around twice. Byrne was criticised by Manny for handling the interview. So okay, so people was critic people criticised. Okay, so the bishop, someone had sex with the bishop, right, and had the kid or whatever, 
And somehow people were like, yeah, that's grand. The bishop can do that. But you can't, you, Gabe Ryan, you can't talk about what he did. He can do, he can go off and have sex with people if he wants. But you can't talk about it, Gabe Ryan. You can't talk about it. Which is kind of how I feel a lot of the time. People constantly tell me, you can't talk about these things. You can't talk about things. You can't say that. And I'm like, I didn't do it. I'm just, someone else did it. Like, I didn't, I didn't sleep with the fucking bishop. Like, all right, here we go. Uh, if, uh, Byrne was criticised for his handling of the interview. Okay. If your son is half as good as a man as his father, he won't be doing too badly, Byrne said to Murphy on the show. I'm not so bad either, Mr. Byrne, Murphy replied, more swiftly exiting the set. Oh! Sly digs by the woman. Annie Murphy. Knocking Gay Burn out flat. Gay Burn put in his place by a powerful woman. Here we go. Um, condom demonstration. Oh shit, 1987. Uh, on this episode, The Late Late, discussing the AIDS crisis, Burn was described, described the safe use of condoms. Um, accompanied by an instructional video. Uh, here's a quote. People f people fall ah. people failing in swoon all over Ireland looking at that. People falling in a swoon all over Ireland looking at that. That's a quote. Um, he said taking a condom from its packet Following, uh, uh, following heavy laughter from the audience. All right. Contraception was legalized in Ireland 1980. Oh my God. So nine years before I was born, uh, allegedly. I don't know how old I am. Um, uh, condoms were illegal. That's mad. So it was illegal to like fucking have a condom, like fucking locked up. Is that the same as marijuana these days? Is marijuana illegal? Yes. Can you be locked up for having a small amount of it on you for personal consumption? Yes. Is it wrong? Who knows? I'm just asking questions. Are condoms wrong? Are they? Are condoms influencing people to do wrong things? Is marijuana influencing people to do wrong things? Is sex and marijuana legally wrong? Will it corrupt your mind? All these trends just keep looping. There's like a a delay anyway sure look I'm full of conspiracy theories I wouldn't believe half of them the video description lasted for a few minutes when we followed by discussion from the audience some of whom described their shock and surprise okay All right, I think that's 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 your lot I think it's time for you guys to fuck off Um, I've had a nice time chatting to you anyway uh yeah so just at the top of the article it says has a picture of him playing piano here he looks looks like he's having a good time gay burn 1999 um he presented the late late show from 1962 to 1999 a 37 year run modernizing the view of irish people through the his discussion topics like sex contraception is not the same thing and Difficult sexual. So he, uh, he looks like he just talked about sex. But <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Fair play to him. Uh, I did, had a lot of stuff open today. A lot of tabs: world news, Irish news, vegan news, mental health news, and the journal. But I wasn't that bothered talking about them because the toy show is on tonight, and that's all I give two fucks about right now. Is my toy show? Okay. So listen, that's your lot. Um, it's been amazing being with you and talking with you and all the rest of it. We might do a guitar lesson today, who knows. Um, we had, I put up six episodes, six hours on the... We did three hours live yesterday. Podcast, I'm still wrecked after it. And then I put up the back catalogue of guitar lessons. Uh, if you want to learn guitar, there's a Make Music Now course. You can... Uh, as fucking... All right. Buy the hat, 100 euro if you want. Create music now. Uh, all the instruments you want delivered right to your door. White instruments with the V, Stephen Seal approval delivered right to your door. Uh, and if you want to learn how to play the instrument, all those instrument 
lessons are available right now for free. Okay, I will generally only be using Create Now instruments to uh, to demonstrate it, but you can you know like go to your granddad's attic right now. Uh, borrow a guitar for a friend, go to a local shop, buy one for 30 euro, the worst guitar you can find. Um, I'll teach you how to tune it, how to play it, uh, how to write your own songs, all the rest of it. 100 hour course, I'm also doing a 100 hour business course which is available right now, the first 5 hours are up right now. Uh, it is called Make Money Now, so we've got Make Money Now and Make Create Now. Two different courses, 5 hours are up already, it's going to be a 100 hour course on each of them for free. Um, Vegan Stephen is the king of consistency. I'm here every day. This is the number one vegan podcast promoting positive mental health. Trying to give you some tips, slip in some tips, um, how to control your own mind, how to um, handle, uh, just ha have your own mind, you know. Um, some tips for positive mindsets um, so that you can stay focused on clear, uh, clear goals. So this, this is fully improvised. Um, I was planning on doing the podcast this morning. I was walking around the studio this morning and I was thinking, what will I do the podcast on today? And I decided I'd do the podcast on clear goals, not clear goals, vision. Having vision for a project and following that vision through and inspiring people by that vision and how you no, can know exactly what you want instantaneously by just saying, does it apply to my vision, yes or no? So you're dating a girl, right? You want to be a pop star. You're date, you're, there's a girl, you're on a date. Um, should you date her or should you not date her? There's two girls. One's brother is uh, gay burned son or whatever. And the other one is not gay burned son. So you, you go have sex with gay burned son so that you get the contact. It's as easy as that, all right? Clear goals. Uh, should you have sex with famous people's sons? Who knows? But she was no harm in trying. <laughs> Consensual. Uh, all praise then, uh, higher powers, whatever higher power you're into. Uh, whether you're into playing chess, whether you're into one of the many gods, Zeus, uh, Oprah Winfrey's, Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, Simon Cowell, the late great Gabriel, any of the classic gods, uh, Zadies. All right, uh, Gabriel, Irish royalty. Uh, this episode is going to be called um, the Late Late Toy Show, dedicated to Gabriel. Okay, or should I call it Gabriel? Dedicated to the Late Late Toy Show. We'll find out. Alright, listen, uh, this is live, this is fully interactive, so thank you very much for all of um, you know your live comments. I haven't got a chance to read them today because I've just been too busy. We've got stacks and stacks and stacks of comments here to read through. Um, please be patient with all your mails on getting your hats. Your hats are on your way to you guys. Um, we're just absolutely swamped off our feet here at the Vegan Stephen podcast. Um, so I will be getting on to you. I know there's been a slight delay on the hats, but we will be sending those hats out to you guys in California, Los Angeles, and all those other places. Okay. That is it. It's been another award-winning performance from Vegan Stephen, and I am out of here. Have an amazing day. You are worth it, and it's all up in the mindset, man. The only thing stopping you is, is belief. Uh, you guys can do exactly what I'm doing right now or something similar. Um, just press record on the phone, have a, have a clear image. And maybe one day you can charge 200 euro for a hat. Goodbye. I'm sick of looking at you.